So I think if it's a Felios here, it actually kind of makes it stronger. Is that what they're going to go for? Are they going to opt to prioritize Patrick's champion pool, Patrick's comfort? But huh. the Senna is up and available. We've just kind of lost sight of it in the midst of all these top lane bans. So if they do play Senna Tom Kench and it's Tori on Kench, I like fasting Senna as a concept. I think it's obviously very strong. My issue is, is that I really like Tore when he has the responsibility on engage tools. And I don't necessarily like when Tore is forced onto something like a Kench. So we'll see if they go for that or if maybe they flex the Senna into the support position as that's a pretty standard red side rotation on a second. But at the same time, when you see Nefelios as well as Sejuani locked in, the setup there for any kind of major place under the Senna is very, very powerful. So maybe Excel feel pressured to take something like the Tom Kench. I agree. I would rather see something that can actually benefit from all that farm. I'm not looking forward to a Sunfire Cape Tom Kench, but the Gragas will be locked in for Cadrill, so he's got some playmaking potential as well. And we'll see what the final pick will be here for Excel. Also, since Sejuani has been picked up, there is now um, extra emphasis on picking up an Aatrox. Uh, melee champions work really well with Sejuani. Aatrox works exceptionally well with Sej. So that's kind of where I'm leaning for this third pick for... Uh, for misfits now that they have Sedge locked in. And if you know it's going to be an Aatrox, Renekton would be okay. Pretty solid. Obviously denying some of the uh, Sejuani Renekton synergy. Haven't seen that duo in, in a while, to be honest, but still something that has to be respected. And final pick here now for Misfits Gaming before they head into the second phase. Could opt to pick one of their solo laners and look to ban out, or could just match top lane here, feeling can't feel entirely comfortable that that Renekton is going to the top lane as Mickey is notorious for those AD champ picks, but still considering their options here. Braum coming through, so at the end of the day, Misfits will be forced into a more passive, more defensive bot lane for B-Boy and Denik. And now the question is, uh, what supports are going to be banned away here from Torre? And there goes the Kench. I'm almost happy about it. <laughs> Honestly, I am. I've played Fasting Senna a few times now, always as the quote-unquote support, and all I'll say is, Kench is the boring option. You can play any champion, it turns out, with farm is good. So why play Tom Kench? Why not play something a little bit more uh, spicy? We're going to see how deep the Torre champion pool goes, how wild he can get. Talking about the first three picks from Excel, though, as these bands go through, I do want to talk about, obviously, the mixed damage profile between a what we assume is going to be a jungle Gragas could technically still be the support, as well as if that's a top lane Renekton versus mid, and then you have a Senna on top of it. Anytime you have Senna, and Excel, I believe, were the team that said this on air, you basically auto win cross map once she has ultimate, because when your top laner gets into a trade, it's basically like Karthus. You just line it up and shoot off the railgun. And it's such a huge trade difference, too. Because Karthus is going to do 200 damage to the enemy top laner, but Senna's going to do 200 damage to the enemy top laner and give your top laner a 300 damage shield. So big, big swing in terms of individual trading. But the Tarek now will be banned away, too. So clearly the focus is not on the solo lanes from Mistress Gaming. They know they're red side. They know they have the luxury of last pick. Instead, just worried about shutting down the fasting Senna strategy with two of the premier options to pair with it. So you either go for a super strong blind pick that's left available, something like the Azir and the Corky that was rightfully targeted out by Excel, or you grab a flex pick that you can still move into either the mid lane or top lane position. We talked about the strength of Aatrox and the fact that Sejuani was available and he rises up on priority. Still also qualifies as that flex pick. And a very safe blind pick in general for top lane in terms of what is remaining, depending on how deep Excel want to go into their respective champion pools. Uh, we've seen the Mordekaiser come out in the past for Expect. If you want to go really far back, we've seen the Yorick when that was still a popular champion, but obviously got hit a ton of times since we last saw it. And I'm curious because Excel, I mean, they need to lock in both options here, so they're taking their time. Rumble. Still flex. Still flex, technically. But it makes it feel like with the Galio now locked in, Galio would benefit a lot from that farm on the bottom side. So it could still be the pairing with the Senna. And I, this is one of the beautiful things about Excel's draft is I feel like they are so flexible with everything that they've opted for so far. Ooh. That would be very spicy. That would be exceptionally spicy. Ooh, Pantheon, okay. Still a bunch of flex picks. We True. don't actually know where Excel are going to shake out in either direction. I assume it would be uh, Galio support, Renekton, and Pantheon into your solo laners. Expect, to me, is the uh, Renekton player, and Mickey has already shown the Pantheon this split, so I assume it's Renekton, Gragas, Pantheon, Senna, and Galio. Yeah, and this is flashbacks, obviously, to Mickey's performance up against Mad Lions on this Pantheon. Coming to the jungle, he kills Humanoid, he kills Shadow, he wins the game single-handedly, and the Akali! Coming back. Now, good synergy with Sejuani. I, ba did, 
I don't like Akali against Galio, though. No, that's true. You can never go in while Galio has Taunt up and available. We heard a lot about that back when she was ludicrously overpowered. And also, Pantheon just gets to jump on you if you don't have Shroud up. So Febivant definitely putting the burden of execution on himself. Have to see if Razor continues to pay more attention to this mid lane, but it is going to be a very explosive, very volatile mid lane matchup. You did talk about how um, Sejuani can really help out the champions like Aatrox and Akali. Now, obviously, we haven't seen a ton of Akali since her changes. She lost a lot of the flexibility to play as offensively and defensively as she wanted to into one of those side lanes. Um, G2 did pull it out, and now Febivin, who has been pretty much the shining light uh, for Misfits, has his hands on this champion. And you have to wonder, if he gets a kill under his belt, we know, we've seen. Because she's still incredibly powerful when she gets that gun blade. The early game is is miserable. From talking to a lot of Akali players, it is difficult to get through, but can just play passive, can just back off. It did not pick Nunu. And Misfits versus ga uh, Gaming versus Excel, as you know, big stakes. Both these teams fighting for similar positions in playoffs, depending on how much further we go. This will not be a bottom versus top sort of matchup. Two teams, neck and neck. So I spy with my little eye as we get into this game that it's still going to be the fasting center. never know when it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> they, gave me, they gave me the countdown, to be fair. I'm supposed to do the thing where I'm like, and Excel versus me. And we're going to time it really Stop well. Stop me next time. We'll figure it out. Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> I mean, how many of the laws did you add there? How do you not have that one learned yet? <laughs> Let's go Misfits 2, all right. <laughs> As I was saying before the LCK intro, Fasting Senna with um, Galio support still. So uh, Ender did a great breakdown. I believe Chakras has also done a breakdown. We've seen it globally. Um, the thing that Ender added is trying to min-max what uh, creeps you're actually farming on the champion. And it's usually two creeps per wave. You'd prefer to do that on the melee minions because obviously they're worth more gold than the back caster minions. And then you're trying to make use of the changes where she has the ability to pull more mist and poke and be super obnoxious. And up against a matchup like Braum, Ophelia should be able to poke pretty comfortably in this lane. Have to see how much time Kedra wants to spend around the bottom side. You heard it from the desk, you heard it from us as well. This is not something that Excel have been known to do. Mickey, maybe with a comfort pick in his hands up against Nikali, can do well on his own. Free Kedra up to spend more time on the bottom side of the map. There's also uh, the potential of a lot of gank and focus in this mid lane between Kadrill and Mickey. Uh, Kadrill right now going for the full clear Gragas, so Rudd Rud, Rud. Rud <laughs> into Krugs. Do Krugs get? Krugs. Krugs. <laughs> into Raptors, uh, into Predator reset. And then he could potentially gank from the top side of the lane. Usually uh, the supports, when they reset and they walk back onto the map, they usually always for, uh, ward bottom side river because you're usually playing around mm. Drake. And that right there is why we're a little bit nervous about the Sakali pick. Big damage coming in. Hard to finish up the dive at this point because it's only level 2 Pantheon, but as level 3 comes through, it's going to be only more difficult for Febivin. He can now opt to get the Shroud here, though, or the uh, Shuriken flip to take him out to safety is expected. He's invading just to disrupt Razork a little bit here. He's at a level disadvantage, however. Yeah, Expect also did a wonderful job of getting the bounce off the tower, so if you peek up at his wave, you can already see that it's been reset in the middle of the lane, and his jungler started bot side. The reset has come in from Gragas. He's now walking into his top side camps, and Expect was able to push fast enough to hit Aatrox's tower and then fall back, and he could potentially find himself in setting up a gank for Cajal topside. Now Kedro has done the reset as predicted for Oscar, and he's gone back to the Predator. As you said, can look to get some more aggressive plays across the map. Razork has been spotted. They know that he's cleared out the red buff. Kedro knows that if he continues forward on the top side, he should be relatively uncontested here. Mid lane has to be careful, though. They keep playing with a little bit of fire. A big damage, though, as the Ignite is ticking down. Febivin, if he steps forward, Spear Ow. coming through. Flash forced out, and Kedro now going to try to walk in, but Razork already there. And mid lane not going well for Misfits so far, but if they don't die here, it's not too much of a loss outside of the flash. But honestly, it's 7 CS for Febivin. This is brutal. 
And it can get really bad because obviously this gives so much space for Kadril to then transfer Febivin's uh, bleeding into Razork's hands as Kadril's going to continue to hunt for him in the jungle knowing that he has priority in both the mid and the top lane position. And Bowen's doing well as well. And this might just be a game where we look back on this draft and say Excel just won and pick and ban. Now, of course, still a lot of opportunities for Sejuani and Akali and Aatrox on the top side to get something done, but right now this early game is disastrous. 27 to nine, three times the CS in the back pocket of Mickey. Fevin just has to go back and buy a cloth armor while Mickey's up two long swords. There was potential that Kadril actually could have looked for double scuttle on uh, Razork. I don't know if he's going to get it this time around because he's going to grab top and probably move into his top side jungle, pick up his buffs, and it should give Razork enough time that he can also pick it up. So maybe on review, if you look at Kadril, if he wanted to be super efficient with his pathing, while he had so much priority over mid lane, he could have grabbed top scuttle, maybe done blue, and then had enough time to walk to bottom scuttle. Scuttle is worth so much experience in gold, um, especially compared to any other camp. But as you can see, Razork does manage to get it. Kadril. Can't tell what I if I actually really decide if um, Kadril min-maxed correctly there in the jungle path and like peeking up top side. I think he actually could have just streamlined his time efficiently and gone into like power farm jungle mode. Yeah, maybe he's feeling like he could make a play, he could make something happen as Mickey once again just absolutely smashes a trade here. Of course, this window where his cooldowns are all unavailable is just unpunishable because Febivin has really nothing here. Will get easier as the ulti starts to come through, as the gunblade comes through, but for now it is all about Mickey here in the mid lane. Yeah, and things aren't going to get much better until, not just for that itemization that you're talking about with Febivin, but also Razork needs to get access to key levels to do damage. Usually Sejuani actually has a lot of power in uh, skirmishes and river because she has surprising burst damage associated with her, but when you're losing so much priority in your lanes because you have something like a mid lane Akali that's just getting kicked in. Uh, Razork is, he's just trying to grind to level six as fast as possible and just praying that he can get there. For now it is, if it is just a survival game, I mean, Febben has not died yet. The flash cooldown has not been punished about halfway through that. So it is a window where it feels like XL want to get something done. Really punish Febben for, for going so far down early, for getting poked out of lane. And now Mickey's trying to get the wave to fall to his side. He wants to get a freeze on Febivin, start to punish him. We've already talked about how Febivin's uh, brutal lane phase is starting to leak into Razork's jungle, and you can see Kadril taking away the Raptor camp, delaying Sejuani. Febivin, though, getting a lot of damage down. Conqueror now proc. Febivin can't commit here. He's out of energy, but does have the ultimate. If there's no ward there, you have to wonder if Mickey would have gotten baited in, but good vision control, good proactivity on placing that one down means Mickey's fine. Still massive CS advantage. His minions are going to be focused. Mickey's minions are going to be focused fired now because it was a single uh, creep when they came into lane. So it should actually... Yep, you can see all three of the back caster creeps are hitting the same uh, melee minion in front of them. So it'll actually slow push back towards Febivin. Oh, and they're baiting. They know Mickey wants to go in here. They know the vision's not there. And you talked about the volatility of Mickey and that we're witnessing it. Misfits are painfully aware. They're hoping, preying on that player tendency for him to always go forward, to always try to win these big trades. I think they're just going to give it up. Febvin just wants to farm. He's also using his Q, and what was going to be a slow push back to Febby has now evened out because Akali hitting uh, more than just a single minion. And it's interesting when you think about both these players in the mid lane because it's it feels like they serve very different roles. It feels like Mickey is kind of a powder keg. You don't always know what you're going to get when he pops off. It looks really good. When it doesn't, it doesn't. And Febvin, while the stats are very similar, it does feel like he's been the rock for this Misfits lineup. Stats similar, I test different. Yeah, it was <laughs> funny. When we were uh, when we were going over Febby and Mickey, um, Febvin's name is coming up a lot in terms of, you know, this mid-split MVP or potential MVP for how explosive he's been for Misfits in their meteoric rise towards the top. Um, but statistically, almost virtually the same as Mickey, which well, we found very interesting. Yeah, because when we pulled stats, we're like, all right, well, give us the difference. Obviously, Febvin's going to be wildly far ahead. And they're like, no, they're eerily similar. And we're like, well, that's very odd. Because the eye test would tell you that Febvin has been kind of one of the sole carries at many points for this team. I think it always just speaks that uh, Mickey's mechanics are really strong. It's some of his decision making in the sticky situations that he finds himself in that feels that the eye test is different, but here comes the special. Pantheon on the way top as well. They're gonna try to dive this one out. There's nowhere for Dandan to go. He can just try to get the one for one. Expect can dash away. In goes Mickey, gonna be able to finish that one up. And first blood for Excel. And this is very reminiscent to the play that Excel did when Mickey played Morgana mid lane. If you remember that initial dive setup, this is something that feels really practiced and really refined from Excel. And the fact that it's constantly going towards expect. And the thing is, when you look at this composition, you may not initially assume 
you know, semi-glow map mobility, but then you remember the Pantheon, the Galio. There's a lot of potential for Excel to just move around the map and extend this advantage. Tori is getting a ton of farm. That's going to be a very difficult Galio to deal with as we get later in the game, and it could be, you know, a more defensive item there with that Kindle Gem, but I'm honestly hoping for a Proto Belt here, and we see some more aggressive choices coming in from Excel. That said, Scuttle Contest comes out. TP now being committed. Razor just going to use the ultimate, expecting a dash out to safety. Senna Alt used as well. Torre forced to burn his TP here, but it does mean that despite the level disadvantage for Kadrol coming into that fight, they do secure uh, the Herald. So, naturally, using the teleport from Torre to guarantee that Excel are able to pick up this Herald, uh, I'm kind of trying to project what will happen as we go later in this game. Because the thing with Excel. Oh, hold it. Oh, the flash, the taunt, the follow up can even get into the shroud in time. He's burning down for the Ignite. He tries to flip out to safety. Fevavin. Q. Just to walk away. Good use of the second stack of ultimate to dash out. Let's get the flash off of Torre, and Fevavin does manage to survive it. He's now got Limit coming up behind him. Or excuse me, Denik coming up behind him to make sure that he can pick up this farm pretty safely, knowing that Braum is waiting in the wings. Uh, back to what I was saying, though, is that Excel have this tendency that when you actually look at where they sit, relative to gold to the teams around them, they never really have breakaway games. Um, they're much more, I guess, controlled would probably be the word that most people would associate with them. They tend to play a little bit slower. They're always kind of neck and neck with you, and then they can either close it out quite cleanly or they, they fall away completely. Um, and why this is scary is because on this type of composition, I kind of like Misfit's chances more the later the game goes. Um, I really have to think about kind of the execution of what each team's or each champion's responsibility is, though, in the 5v5. Um, but because you have someone like Patrick on the Fasting Senna, I don't know. It's really hard to say because also the thing is, is with the Senna Global Ultimate, with the Galley, with the Pantheon, they may not even need to fight. And now the question is, I mean, it, you're right. If we get to that point where Excel slowed the game down and we drag a little bit, the longer it drags, the more it feels like it's going to favor Misfits. This Akali, the Sejuani. I'm not 100% on that one, but I just need to think about it a bit more and see how it's going to execute in team fights. But I do have some concerns if Excel don't get a, a good snowball. I've seen enough for Nectin's in late game to feel like Excel might have to be very, very on the nose in terms of execution. But for now, they're doing very well in the early game. They moved up to a 2K gold advantage. I will say it's one of the better games for Renekton in terms of the enemy comp that he's facing because there are a lot of short range champions um, and it's against something like an Aphelio. So he should have, you know, better backline access than some of the other comps that we've seen running around the LEC that have a lot more range and disengage to play with. Very true. And the setup has been solid so far in the early game. You can see that just in general, all of Excel feeling quite comfortable. Bot lane really the only place where you're seeing a pretty large CS discrepancy, and it makes sense when you factor in the fact that Tori is a melee champion trying to farm against a uh, Aphelios Braum lane. But still, I believe, overall, more probably effective stats on the side of the Excel bottom lane, even if the gold might not show it. You know... I'll favor Excel. I'm going to assume that the execution will be that it's Mickey who's responsible go to getting into the back line with the Pantheon ultimate and not necessarily just expect. And then you're just dropping Tori on top of it. And it's that similar strategy that Fnatic played as I'll hold it Mickey. for Kevin. Here comes Kadrol. On the way in. And this is where the match might start to shift a little bit. Not opting for the gunblade instead, just getting a bit more armor, but going to ruin a lot of the effective value of that lethality. It's also just delaying the initial spike for Akali here. Knockup is there, taunts there, patch with the fall, but just poking and getting a few extra souls. And I think the thing for us, Grant, is it's just like, it feels very similar to what we saw last game from Fnatic in the sense that it's a mobile AD carry on one side and a ton of champions who are just incredibly good at making sure that b -Boy, in this case, just does not get to play the game. Yeah, I'm really glad that you brought it up. It was the point that I wanted to cover. It's the backline access and dive potential from Excel's composition. The difference here. A little bit more setup, a little bit more utility on Patrick. Have to see if the Fasting Senna can kind of match the same output that B-Boy can as we move later in the game. But for now, XL firmly in control. They're going to move over to the Infernal Drake. Misfits can look to contest, but I don't think they want to quite yet. Uh, Umbral Glaive comes in from Mickey, so less focused on his lane, it would appear. He knows the matchup is starting to shift and instead wants to pay his attention elsewhere as he can clear out a bit more vision. Just didn't have the priority in the lanes necessary to step up. Um, no reason to toss a game this early on over the initial Drake, even if it is an Infernal. So I agree with Misfit's decision to just let it go, especially because Febvin, not in the greatest position, needs this back. Ooh, it decides to cancel it. 
I think he would have made it. I think he was scared that the potential cask was coming in. Because you have to think, like, the burst damage from yeah. body slam, cask, barrel, and a pantheon with ignite, uh, he'd die. And this is big. They've canceled the Akali recall. They know that Febbin can't really come to the play. He can't commit to TP, but he doesn't have the ultimate yet, and he's only level 10. The rest of the team now setting up Pantheon on the way in. A perfectly timed stun from Razor, though incredibly clean. And the Galio comes in, but it's too little, too bit too late. Excel, though, now trying to finish up, now trying to get the play down. But B-Boy going forward. He's laying down so much damage. Patrick can't even get in there. B-Boy is going to get dropped, or is he? A little bit more damage. B-Boy walks away. That's disaster for Excel. The execution was not there for them, but Misfits pull it off in a miracle and survive. And no one next necessarily talks about B-Boy, but he is so stable, very consistent. He's not necessarily the ADC that comes to mind when he sets up the dominoes and he kicks it off and makes the big play, but when things are set up for him, he proves that he's more than worthy to hang with the best right there. Beautifully done in terms of his kiting to survive that fight. Yeah, he should have died. I, I want, when we look back at that, I can think of it like at least six times that that should have been a dead Aphelios. Well played by him, and also, once again, Razork denying the Pantheon, perfectly timing the Sejuani ult there. He's played more than a few games against that champion, you have to feel like. Frame perfect, though, on the Sejuals. And now, we've gone from Acceler dictating the pace, Acceler in complete control, to Bevan's approaching that Gunblade. Bevan's going to start to be more and more scary, and suddenly it's it's the Senna that I'm worried about in terms of defending your back line. Yeah, it's really important because we talked about how Febbevan, when he had to itemize into the Seeker's arm guard, because he was against Pantheon in the mid lane, was delaying his initial power spike for that Gunblade, which is, as you said, the big window for Holly. And now picking up... Um, this extra bonus into the bot lane kind of puts him back on track for that. So we take another look at it, like you said, just out of the Pantheon ultimate, Razor destroys him. And now eyes on B-Boy for how close he comes to death, using his flash, walking back forward, knowing that the uh, damaging spells are down. Actually surprised that the uh, added bonus to Galio's Q didn't finish him off there since he stood in it for a while. Yeah, now the good news for Excel is that they will grab this one, but yeah. A lot of confidence there. Has to walk away from Patrick. Gives Patrick respect. Has to walk away from Galio. Has to back up. And I mean, there's not he a lot. Kept calm. Of, it's not, and he was caught in the pinch between the towers. So just generally well played from B-Boy. And XL are going to be kicking themselves because they did just uh, throw away most of their early game advantage. The good news is they still have the Infernal. They've got this Herald. They can build up a gold lead for themselves once again. But we talked a lot about... Emphasis here on the early game. I, I am concerned for the Pantheon. I am concerned for Mickey as we move later into this game. We had questions truly about who actually outscaled. Um, I just think the power of Aphelios, especially if you can't kill him, super strong. And we've already seen Bevoy kind of survive the initial botch dive. Now that said, <laughs> Mickey may have jumped the gun a little bit and Razork played it very well with the Sejuani ultimate. We'll see if it gets better the next time they try that. Yeah, I think the other thing too is it's just you're against Brahm Sejuani. The reality is, is, unless on the side of Excel you execute flawlessly, you're immediately stunned, you're then probably stunned again, and you just don't really get to interact with, with anything. It's like uh, Misfit's ability to play front to back is much stronger, whereas Excel have so many more options to be creative about how they shape these fights with either the cask or the dive potential. Well, Patrick caught out there. We'll manage to make it out with the cleanse as well as the flash, but Dandan continuing to step forward. Trying to finish off a bit more, but getting two summoner spells from the AD carry is going to make it that much easier in the fights to come. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, though, expect already pushing in, looking to break down one tower of his own. Yeah, it feels like Excel still uh, playing the map, however, the fact that they got the mid tower with the Herald, now it's expect picking up this bottom structure, so still a cross map. Um, they're going to maintain their gold lead, and expect can get out of this. Of course, already has the Black Cleaver finished, so 40 CS advantage for him. See if he can continue to bully out in this matchup. I, looks like we may be having a GA here. But for now, the mortal reminder just to continue to make him a nightmare to play against on the side lane. It always feels that, and I was having this conversation with Whippo on the analyst test the other day, that Renekton just doesn't have the same longevity as other top lane champions in the game. Um, and with kind of the current way that teams play, you really lose a lot of the opportunity to maximize his potential, which is being that bull in the lane phase. Now, obviously, itemizing for the Executioner's Calling. He really wants to stay in that side lane and continue to have 1v1 ability against Dan Dan. Um, but I have a feeling that there is eventually going to be a breaking point between Aatrox and Renekton, pending itemization. True. And the good news is, as long as you're fighting in a wave, as long as you're fighting in a lane, Renekton can build up Rage. A lot of his trading power comes through. You can see the Empowered Stun there. Quick proc on the Conqueror. Bevan may be forced to dive out of this one, tries to dash to safety, but the point and click is there. Easy pickup from Mickey and Febbin leaving the shroud a little bit too quickly. 
And that's the threat whenever anyone goes that side lane. You talked about it earlier, Dracos. It's the fact that there's so much mobility on the side of this Excel composition with the Pantheon and the Galio in tandem. Uh, that you can't really afford to be that far forward on these lanes, especially with how much CC sits in these champions. Spect has Flash. And I like it. They're ready to make a play. Cage was stepping forward, though. Denik there to block in the area. Now, Dan Dan's being left on his own to recoup some of the losses that he grew in the laning phase. Round two on the dive onto B-Boy. This time, though, it looks like it might go a little bit better for B-Boy, as he's doing so much damage. Goodbye to Expect. Big ulti comes in. The mark. Not quite enough, but the setup is there now for Dan. Keep your eyes in the mid lane, though. That's going to be the more important fight. Expect is gone. Excel now on the retreat. So far, it's the one for one. The Braum for the Renekton. Positive trade for Misfits. Uh, the first attack of the Darken Blade will not connect, and Excel can just walk away from that one. Yeah, but the Sejuani ultimate was used, and it was just Dan Dan that would have the chasing potentials for Vin's TP just not up yet. B Boy. Very greedy. Flash. Oh, the flash taunt though. B-Boy now moving out to safety. The extra movement speed coming in there. Now Mickey's there as well. And B-Boy, you hate to see it. He was feeling alive. He was the unkillable B-Boy. He's like, I've got flash. I'm fine. You might as well test him. See I if mean, the after, reflexes are ready. Maybe he actually thought after that last tower dive that he's immortal. I mean, he survived that tower dive. He survives this Renekton. Maybe he just thinks, I actually have God Mode turned on. I actually cannot die at this point in the game. Renekton dives back, B-Boy immediately hits him with the cleanse, um, and Expect just buys enough time with this Hourglass before falling down to the Aphelios. And then as we said, because Razork used the Sejuani ultimate on the initial dive, there was no more chase potential for Misfits, even though they were feeling themselves. Yeah, what for that one. And now checking in, Excel once again back in the driver's seat. Good news for them. Uh, Misfits feel like they're finding picks left and right. They're staying very much even. They're not losing any more than they were. But despite a disastrous tower dive on bottom side, Excel remaining pretty comfortable in this game. We'll do the uh, the classic Senna soul check, as she's not going to walk over to Raptors to grab those three. But Patrick already at 72, so about to hit that 80 break point where he will have 100 bonus range. I feel like we are getting a, a bit better, better for Misfits breakpoints. We now finally have the completed itemization for Febivin. Uh, we saw how he needs to be a bit more careful how he's playing these side lanes, but he's constantly being confident to go down there to grab CS. Uh, I want to see how much damage he actually does in this matchup, if this lane assignment is even viable for him to be across from Expect at this point. Definitely difficult. I feel like they're just ping-ponging ping -ponging waves back and forth. And right now that favors Excel, because while they're trading waves, definitely the rest of the team is pushing in. Dan Dan can't afford to stand alone, and Excel, that means, gets sole control over the top side of the map. Azor can't throw an alt out here. It'd be a very aggressive move, but Excel have good vision into the pit. Bad news for Excel is they don't really shred through the Baron. With a Pantheon, a Renekton, as well as a Senna, yeah, you're going to do good damage, but there's not a Cassio or an Aphelios or one of the traditional champions that can just delete this objective. I think it's more about playing on their control wards with some of the hard CC they have. So watching Torre's position to see if he can connect with that taunt. As Misfits are doing a really good job being very respectful here, um, moving with Dinek, checking the brushes whenever he has the Q available, and yeah. Razor's not you know, jumping the gun on just throwing out Sejuani ultimates when he gets scared. He wants to make sure that his team's behind him to follow up on that CC for damage. I wonder if Misfits are waiting for any specific breakpoint. They do now have, uh, or will shortly have two items now coming through from B-Boys. He finishes the Runans. It's actually uh, really well played from Misfits in terms of just the patience that they have in grappling for control over their Drake or their uh, jungle again by slowly moving their control wards. You know, you think about some of the... Oh, younger... that was a big bait. <laughs> Fevman threw down the shroud and Expect just takes the bait. He goes, wait a second, why would he, why would he do that? That's so it. It's not Expect. You've been baited. You've been outsmarted. Now you're stunned. The Galio coming in, though. Maybe he can turn it. The knockup's there. Expect running for his life. Sidestep there from the Sigwani, but no. Fevman flat forward. Shoots him with the gun fade right away. And now manages to make it out, too. Clean play comes in from Misfits. Look Patrick's Patrick. left on is lonesome. The snare's gonna come through. The Concussive Blows does not land, but the Onslaught comes out, and Misfits, just like that, start to even
even things up. Oh, hold on, B-Boy might be on the wrong side of things. Big ult though, the fall off to sever him. The life steal. Tori doesn't have enough damage to beat through him, and that's gonna be the double kill now coming in. This is gonna be a B-Boy cleanup show. If they try to go any further into this fight, a messy series of plays. Yeah, but ultimately it's Misfit to win out and also have proper positioning on Baron. And we talked about how Excel might not be able to burn Baron, but Misfit's composition can really shred through this. Absolutely shred. He has a Severum as well with the Onslaught. It's going to be a lot more damage. Mickey, one man versus the world. Cajal here to try to steal it. Expect can try to come in as well. This is definitely not what you want to be doing. Fevin will have the Shroud up and available for this play. 4K getting lower. Expect diving into the pit, trying to get some damage down. Pantheon now leaping in as well. That's going to be big. Mickey goes to the backside, but the Aphelios is too strong. There's too much life steal. That's the shutdown. That is not at all what Excel wanted. Desperation is the name of the game, and it bites right back as Misfits will take the Baron. And everything went wrong for Excel there. They thought... Maybe this isn't going to be so bad. Misfits caught them out onto the rotation, moved it perfectly into Baron, and you called it desperation from Excel. They panicked in the moment. And the thing is, Frostgren, we'll get a look, chance to look back at that, I'm sure. But this is a game that Excel had to win. This is a game they could not afford to lose. Because when you look forward, when you look ahead to what's coming up, it is Fnatic. It is G2, it is OG. Yes, there are other teams there too, but these are the big three. This is where you need to find wins because sadly, Misfits is one of your easiest options overall. We take another look at that one. You set it up, Dracos. It's the fact that preemptively, the uh, Shroud came up to try to bait Expect. And Expect does do his due diligence and stalling for as long as possible before the Gunblade finishes him off. But then it's, uh, I actually think where Patrick gets caught out trying to make rotation in River, and you can see that Braum and Bevoy have already found him. I'm just very sad that that play worked. Just like, oh, why would a Kali randomly shroud in lane for no reason? But as he said, and this is the thing, Bevoy's now been set up in a position where he's gotten to sit, scale comfortably, everything was happening around the top side, and he's hit that Aphelios nightmare state where he can just shred through anyone who walks into melee range, assuming he's got the right guns up and available. And Febivin, from getting bullied in lane, is now 3-1-4, and four, has a CS lead, has two items completed, and it's going to be very hard to 1v1 him. And now all these breaking points have come to fruition for Misfits, and we were, you know, talking about it in the early game. Do Excel have the composition where they can get to that back line, where they can do what Fnatic did previously and make Aphelios' life a living hell? And the answer is no, really, in these team fights that we've seen. B-Boy is just melting through people. You called it the nightmare phase, and front to back team fights are feeling very good for Misfits. Yeah, and it's only now with the setup as well. The cow from connects, you get the immediate stun follow up. But we said question marks around scaling, right? We said there's poss possibility for Excel to come out on top to win some of these late games fights. It's all about execution. And we're gonna have to see if they can execute here because Pantheon's on the way and Spear connects. Pantheon coming in too. They're gonna knock up, they're gonna take Denik out of the fight right off the bat. They wanna limit the concussive blows. Torrey's there, but they've now burned everything. The follow-up fight, they have to win this. They have to make use of this man advantage. Razor going into the backside. The stuns are coming through. The follow-up's there for B-Boy, but the alt misses. The range nerf turns against them. Bevan's gonna grab one. They wanna find the follow-up, but he just manages to walk away. Big damage from Dan Dan. The follow-up, the infernum, the snares are there. Dan Dan's looking for a victory lap as he just runs through the Excel lineup. Dan Dan, you god, what a cleanup! Ah, oh, Dan Dan the man man picks up the triple kill. Now that said, he was the guy who walked away with the triple, but B Boy's damage was disgusting throughout that fight, even setting up that initial kill when Dan Dan flash forward to land on him. And Misfits immediately turn it on. They find the correct itemization. B Boy's like, I'm a failure, we can walk through them, and they walk through the Nexus. Absolutely. Once those alts are all down, it is a go button for the entire Misfits lineup. A well played game. Misfits gonna move up to nine and four. Excel, they had the early game, they had everything, but they got too desperate but it all fell apart, a win for Misfits. Shaky initially, Kevin was not having a good time in that mid lane. But like you said, overreaches and immediately punished by Misfits, especially in that dive, which was so crucial because Bevavin's itemization was disrupted when he had to go for the Seeker's Arm Guard. He picks up that kill and those assists spot him. He then comes right back with the Gunblade. And I just... You only get so many mistakes with a composition like that. Dive bot lane, Excel still in the game. We got that questionable one-for-one one in the mid lane where they gave up their top laner for support. Excel's fine.
And then that Baron play happened. And that was the breaking point. There was there was nothing left. And honestly, shout out to, to B-Boy. Keeping a cool head in that tower dive. Dealing